You know you're nearing Pine Valley, it's been said, when over the hum of synthetic tires, you hear wailing and lamentations on the wind, an agonized chorus that grows in intensity. The number one golf course in America, as ranked by Golf Digest, may be the toughest course in all the world. But first, you have to find it. Before GPS, before navigation systems, even the closest gas stations had no idea how to get there. It's somewhere in southwest New Jersey, 30 minutes from Philadelphia. Get off the interstate and head to the Clementon Amusement Park, then listen for the cries. Those train tracks on your right are reminiscent of how George Crump, the founder and amateur architect, discovered this prehistoric terrain on the Reading Railroad to Atlantic City. It was once the headquarters of the Lenny Lenape Native Americans, and a millennial before that, geologists believe, it was the ocean floor. As Herbert Warren Wind wrote, it has the characteristics of good lynx land, replete with abrupt ridges, sudden dips and swirls, and a general anxiety. No course quite like it has been built since, and no course is as demanding of every shot, even today. Crump never lived to see it finished. It remains his monument. This is every hole at Pine Valley. The first hole immediately says, let's see what you can do. A classic risk reward off the tee, over a hazard to a bending fairway where sand reaches out to grab a weak fade. There's excitement just walking down the fairway. The approach shot must be precise, left, right, or long, and you may be happy to make a double bogey. When extra hole playoffs come here, they don't go any further. That's the way Crump envisioned it. The second is the longest, most treacherous 368 yards in golf. Do you play it or take a picture of it is the common refrain. Just make sure you hit the fairway off the tee, 32 yards wide, but the eye of a needle. Bunkers rigged like a herringbone run up both sides to a rising hill. Originally, the green was guarded by a vertical slope of white sand. Now there's a lunar scape of sand pits. You can only see the top of the flagstick. The green is even more perilous. A missed shot is a death sentence. As the members say, welcome to Pine Valley. The par threes here have been called the best set of short holes in the world. You need a different club in your hand on every one. Here's the third, 198 yards over the gnarliest topography to a skull-shaped green leaning sharply to the left. Jay Sigal once seven putted it in the Crump Cup. Four is the longest par four on the course at 504 yards, half of it a blind carry off the tee. The view from the top of the hill is majestic. Cross bunkers are in play for a long hitter, but more often they capture a poor second shot. The green runs away from you. Keep in mind the clubhouse is in play. Carlton Forrester entered the lure of Pine Valley when he played a shot off the roof in the 2012 Crump Cup. But Pine Valley most famous feat was also accomplished here by the amateur J. Wood Platt. He birdied the first, holed a six iron for a two at the second, then made an ace at the third. After holing a 30-foot putt for a birdie at the fourth, he repaired to the bar to steady his nerves and did not emerge to finish the round. Philadelphia's caddy scholarships are named for him. Every tee shot presents a new challenge, and the most difficult might be at number five, the Frankenstein monster of par threes. Gene Littler made a newspaper seven on this hole in a match against Byron Nelson for the first episode of Shell's Wonderful World of Golf, which comes as no surprise to any golfer who misses it right. The complex of bunkers set into the hill left of the green is where many players hit it today. From there, they scrape it over into Littler territory before picking it up for their own newspaper seven. Harry Colt is responsible for this hole. He spent only two weeks on the property, helping Crump root the course. Next to Sunningdale, the fifth at Pine Valley may be his most lasting tribute. The championship tee on number six restores the full value of its heroic cape design. On most of the holes, just a pretty good shot is of no use at all, Crump said. 
He wanted a course that would test the best players to their limit and make them better. The seventh is the longest hole on the course, 636 yards from the back, with Hell's Half Acre, the sandy waste at its midpoint, filled not just with sand, but clumps of scrub oak and scotch broom, pine bushes and mountain laurel. You might say there are no bunkers at Pine Valley. Pine Valley is one big hazard with occasional patches of grass. There also are no rakes at Pine Valley. Golfers are asked to smooth their deepest footprints, but otherwise the sand is left to be tended by wind and rain. It's right about now you notice the water tower, decorated as a Dutch-inspired windmill. Legend is that a member once suggested it to club president John Arthur Brown, who sent him the bill for its construction. Today, it doubles as a halfway house for beverages and snacks and handfuls of ibuprofen. Tom Watson's favorite hole is the eighth, stretching only to 326 yards with two greens. The one on the left is original. The right was added in 1986 to take stress off the other and it's nobody's favorite. Your wedge approach, side hill, downhill, off a thin lie to an uphill spit of green with a false front is wicked. Often overlooked are the greens, massive football fields on some, postage stamps on others, frozen waves, rumpled blankets, elephant burial grounds. Impossible to read without advice from the club's famously quirky caddies. Maybe the best caddy core in the world. The aim of a putt may be 90 degrees from a straight line to the hole. Green speeds reach scary fast at tournament time, as quick as 12 to 13 on the stint meter. The 458-yard ninth has two greens as well. Again, the left came first. A stand of trees were recently removed from behind, creating an infinity green when approached from below. As Herb Wynn said, it's the most dazzling succession of second shots available on any course. Recent Tom Fazio changes throughout the course have involved tree removal, opening up the visuals, and exposing more sand. Tees were moved back, hard holes got harder, George Crump's vision endured. Then there's the hole we've been waiting for, the short tenth, only 142 yards from the middle tee a bowl of Briar's ice cream. Bob Hope once played the front nine in 43, then took an 11 on the 10th. Wait, what is that darkened aperture short right? It's the bottomless pit, known inelegantly throughout the golfing world as the devil's asshole. No golfer has ever walked past it without stopping to stare into its gravitational pull. It said Pine Valley is the only course in the world with 18 great holes, not an indifferent one among them. Upon playing the course only once, you can remember every hole distinctly. Each is a separate masterpiece, like the zigzag 11th here. The fairway looks 60 yards wide, but the target is the smallest triangle. Framed apart from all the others, many consider it their favorite hole. At the 1936 Walker Cup, the great Charlie Yates composed a parody of Joyce Kilmer's poem, Trees. I think that I shall never see a course as lovely as Pine Valley. With trees and sand traps everywhere and divots flying through the air, a course laid out for fools like me, but only God can make a three. The 12th is a drive and a pitch 358 yards but visually the most intimidating hole on the course. When Fazio renovated it, he kept the footprint of the fairway and green exactly the same, but created the fifth circle of hell on the left with a cacophony of sandy caverns deep enough for human exploration. Those who criticize the new look don't realize it's exactly what Crump would have done if only he had Tom's bulldozers. Keep it right off the tee and the course might yield its easiest birdie. Pine Valley blends all three schools of golf design, heroic, penal, and strategic over the whole course, often on a single hole. For rugged grandeur, 13 may be the best of the best. 501 yards, first to a perched landing area on the right, 
then a long sweeping second with death or glory at hand. It's Pebble Beach's eighth hole without the Pacific Ocean. Fourteen was originally conceived as a short par four, but it's now the final par three. From a complex of elevated tees, 210 yards from all the way back, it plays downhill over a beach bunker to an island green. The official record for most strokes on a hole at Pine Valley was once held by John Brooks, a Washington attorney, who played it in 46 blows, like most records made to be broken. When you walk off the green, cover your head, there's invariably a call of four as incoming mortars bomb the 15th tee from behind. The long wooden bridge there is a famous one. Legend has it that Bobby Jones in 1930 came to Pine Valley to relax and get out of a slump ahead of the final leg of the Grand Slam at Marion. His poor play continued with three X's on the early holes, and Jones cursed the ducks on the pond here before hitting his drive at 15. When he set foot off the bridge, he had an epiphany, as if an anvil had been lifted from his shoulders. He said he felt a natural calm. The slump was over, and Jones went on to win the amateur championship and golf's only grand slam. This is known as the miracle of the bridge. It might have been 15 that Bernard Darwin had in mind when he called Pine Valley an examination in golf. 615 yards every step uphill and sloping left to right to a narrowing target with a false front. For some of us, this par 5 is actually a par 7, requiring four full shots and three putts. Make sure you carry your approach to the middle of the green and good luck from there. Some say this clutch of holes, 13, 14, 15, is Pine Valley's amen corner. Others think all 18 holes invoke the Lord's Prayer. Are they unfair at times? Maybe so. But isn't that the ultimate test? Can a player hit a good shot only to be crushed by a horrific result, then still find it within himself or herself to rise to the occasion on the next one? That's the essence of Pine Valley. Where to aim your tee shot on 16 decides your fate. 475 from the back. The view is breathtaking down to the lake dug out by Crump when he removed 22,000 trees from the whole property. You never have a flat lie. Why the fairway is divided by a swath of rough is a mystery. Sand catches a pulled second, but push it a skosh and your ball slides maddeningly into the water. The round nears the end with a delicate dogleg right, the 17th which at one time had two fairways, kind of a sister hole to the second. A new tee stretches it to 414 yards. The approach is uphill over a crater of scrubland. Then a brood of a finish, arguably the finest 18th hole anywhere, a 483-yard wonder of the world. The tee shot is elevated with a long carry. The second is over sand and rough and water and sand again, upward to the home green, where golfers, bloodied and bowed, doff their caps and shake hands. The round is done. A libation awaits. Pine Valley is criticized on the grounds that the punishment for an error is out of proportion to the degree of the error said John Arthur Brown, club president for 50 years. The thrill of Pine Valley is the constant battle the golfer wages with the course. He can't let up for a moment or he's sunk. We like it that way, he said. Pine Valley will not be for the novice or the timid player, said Tillinghast, a member. George C. Thomas said Pine Valley's charm is the thrill of surmounting its varied hardships. Countered Bernard Darwin, the right of eternal punishment should be reserved for a higher authority. Before Pine Valley was even finished, Donald Ross and C.B. McDonald declared it the greatest golf course in America. A century later, they're still right. I think there's a casual nobility to the place, owed in part to its scale, 600 plus acres, and its friendly membership, now including women, and the passion of its staff. If 18 holes aren't enough, 
the club has a 10-hole short course and the most hallowed practice range in captivity. Savor the experience. You will never forget it or any of its holes all the days of your life.